Welcome back to the Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Learn Tunisian hosted by Mikey series and today you're going to learn how to start with your Tunisian. Now Tunisian is an actual knit look just like you see here and uh, there's many many like tons and tons of different stitches. Today we're going to go through some of the basic stitches at the end but first what we're going to do is that we're going to explore some of the secrets when it comes to Tunisian. I tried to learn Tunisian when I was a teenager from a book and what I thought was wrong within my project were actually characteristics of Tunisian. So I'm going to be teaching you some basic elements to look for what you need to look for in a hook and some tips when it comes to that. So without further ado let's uh, begin our first part and let's go over some of the secrets now. Tunisian is also known as Afghan crochet. The hooks that we're using are referred to as an Afghan hook. Just like so you could call it Tunisian hook if you're looking online if you're looking to purchase. So what we have here is that it appears to be a cross of knitting and crochet. So you're only using one hook. So you're getting a knitting appearance just like so but actually just using one uh, particular device instead of like two knitting needles in order to be able to achieve it. So crocheters really have the ability to make uh, knitted looking items with an afghan hook and not have to give up their love for crochet at the same time. It's also when it comes to the yarn, some yarns look better in crochet versus knitting. And so what you see here is a crochet version and this is just single crochet and this is Tunisian. You can see how the colors look a lot differently. I know it's even a different color but you can actually see how well it, it actually blends in. Some yarns really lend itself better to knitting than it does crochet and again that's up to the project that you're working on. So this is one of those elements that if you love the look of a particular yarn and a knitted version but not so much in a crochet. The Tunisian gives you the power to be able to use your crochet hook and get the looks of knitting without actually learning how to knit. When doing Tunisian just like so you will notice that you're coming all the way across and you're picking up the stitches. It very much looks like a knitting needle at this point but there's not another um, hook to worry about. What you're always going to think about is that you're always going to go back and forth. You never ever turn your project unless that's the look you're going for. So for example we're going to pick up all of our stitches going all the way across and then we just loop and then start uh, bringing them off on the other side and we'll cover that when we're going to show you how to do stitches. So you never ever turn your project like crochet you're going to finish a row you turn your project you move up. This one here you just go back and forth. Just visualize Fred Flintstone when he was eating corn on the cob and it's a ch -ch 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 ding and then going back it's like a typewriter the same thing ding, 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 and go back. So it's the very same way Tunisian you never turn your project and you're always looking at the front side when you're working on it just like so. So what you're seeing here before I continue is that it's a combination of different stitches that are working together in order to create the ribs just like you see here. So how you wrap your hook and how you do all that really determines the look of your finished project as well. When it comes to your Tunisian hooks you have to really pay attention to the size. Now what you're going to notice in Tunisian patterns is that you're thinking that the hook size is way too big for the recommendation of the yarn. So for example this is the Bernat Handicrafter. It's asking for a five millimeter or a US size H crochet hook. Now you should know that if you try to do that with the Tunisian hook that your work is going to have a very severe curl to it. It's just going to wrap and wrap and wrap. Because you're always working with the front side is and the tension is always much greater in Tunisian you're going to notice that it's going to have like a scroll appearance and that it's really going to roll. You should know that your work is going to roll anyway but the, the uh, amount of the roll matters on the size of the hook. So you, when you go to look at Tunisian patterns if this is a five millimeter or a size H it's you should really move up two sizes. So a six millimeter or a size um, a J or a K and you can determine that. So when you go to see the sizes in Tunisian and you're thinking the hook is way too big for the recommendation of the yarn you have to trust in it. There are many different types of sizes that you see and different lengths of a Tunisian Afghan hook just like this. So this is just one I bought at a regular craft store. You can go online. What I strongly recommend is that your Tunisian hooks are actually bamboo. Bamboo are much lighter than the actual steel or aluminum and are a lot easier. In the long term just holding this hook with your project on it actually tires out your hand. So I'd recommend going with the bamboo. But what you need to watch out for and don't be like a me is that off camera I have another hook that actually is made of bamboo. So let me pull it up here and so this is another one. I left it in uh, a cup and you can see that it's really warped. So if I go to put the two together just like see 
it's, let me just do it, there you go. See the warp on this thing? So this is the problem. I cannot use this hook. In actual fact this hook is now garbage. When you go to try to use a warped one just like so, see the difference of just, of the spin? It makes it very difficult to be able to do Tunisian. You gotta make sure that if you're using bamboo that you stay, uh, store it in a safe spot so they lay flat so you don't ever have a warped hook. This makes a huge difference when it comes to the enjoyment. So look for bamboo and if all else fails look for plastic and then steel as your third choice if you're going to. Now here's an afghan hook but wait a minute when I go to the other side there's a hook on this side. This is called the crow hook. You can use this for Tunisian as long as you're not worried about it actually popping off on the other end. Most of the Tunisian hooks have a stopper at the end to prevent the work from actually sliding right off. Now crow hooking is another technique uh, used. It's also called crow knitting and basically it allows you to carry two different kinds of yarns in your particular project to make a forward and or sorry a front and back side particular project with different colors. It's a really neat concept. So you really wanna look for your project. So if you cannot find in the store something with a stopper you can actually probably find find something like this called a crow hook in order to make it work. Now you'll notice that some of the crow hooks, um, the hook is here and then see how it's facing up on this side as well so I haven't turned it. So that doesn't matter. So some of the hooks have it facing up on this side and this side it's facing down. It doesn't really matter. It's all depends how you rotate your hook anyway. So just wanna look for that when you're going. And what you really can't notice here but it will happen as I'm showing you in the demonstration is that there's always going to be a slight lean to your project. So whenever you're going to uh, move yourself up you will notice that the project wants to move up on a diagonal. Okay, very slight but it's very noticeable. So unless you block it, um, it actually will always have a slight lean to it. So when you're doing clothing and stuff you, you're gonna think oh it's not gonna work out but in actual fact it's adjustable. So you just have to look for that. The reason why that's happening just so that you're aware is that you see how the one string is just slightly over. So if you look at it, it's just slightly over, the next one slightly over, the next one slightly over and etc. That creates the lean just like so. So if that's happening in your project and you're not screwing up, this is part of the characteristics of your particular project. So just uh, be conscientious of that. In the next part of this tutorial we're gonna cover three different stitches. The first one is the Tunisian Simple Stitch also known as TSS within the abbreviations of a pattern. The next one is the Tunisian Knit Stitch and that's abbreviation of TKS. And then finally we're gonna cover the Tunisian Pearl Stitch which is TPS. So without further ado I'm gonna be using this really big crochet hook today showing you with bulky yarn so you can exactly see where we go. In the future tutorials that I have lined up for you we're gonna downsize ourselves to the regular crochet hooks or afghan hooks just to be able to show you how to do that in, in within a real project. But for tutorial reasons for this I'm gonna show you with a big hook cause it's just a lot easier to see where you need to go. To demonstrate the stitches I'm gonna be doing a th five different things. I'm gonna show you how to cast on. We're gonna be using Bernat Mega Bulky today. It's a lot easier to show you with thicker yarn. And then we're gonna do the simple stitch, the knit stitch and pearl stitch and then I'm gonna show you how to cast off uh, to be able to finish it off. So I'm gonna be covering all that next and let's begin with the cast on. Let's start the casting on process by creating a slip knot. And let's grab our afghan hook and insert it into the loop just like this. And what I want to do is that I want to um, just chain like I normally would with crochet. So you're holding it in your hands just like you normally would and we're just gonna start off and I want 10. Remember the loop on the hook never counts as one. So we have one and two and three, four and five, six, seven, and eight, nine, and ten. So there is your first starting chain of just ten. So the goal is is that if I started off with ten, when I come back there should be ten loops left on the actual afghan hook and I'll show you that in just a sec. The next part of the process is that we're gonna start collecting all of the loops that are on this chain onto this actual afghan hook. How you do it is that you go and count to the second one of the, uh, from the hook. So you got one and two. What I strongly recommend is that don't grab any of the front side so you can see the nice stitch work in the front. Grab it the loop that's on the back. 
Okay, so grab that loops on the back. Once you get the first one, the rest of the road or a chain just turns over on itself anyway. So just grabbing your hook, just go into the back loop only. Okay, and that's second chain from the hook. Okay, insert into the chain, yarn over and pull through. And leave it on your hook. Okay, so let's go into the next one. So we just move to the next one that's available to you. And once you do the first one, as I said, it turns over. By doing the back loop only or the back hump, whatever you wanna call it, it actually makes the, the curl less likely um, to happen. It still will happen, but it won't be as severe. So you keep just going down the chain on the back loop, just like this. And we're doing the casting on process. And so if I started off with, uh, I chained 10, I should have 10 of these on my crochet hook by the end of by the end of the the chain. So I'm just moving my way slowly. Getting started with Tunisian is always a bit of a task. I'm not gonna deny that but once you're started it gets a lot easier as you get to hold on to more of the project. Do you notice that I'm sliding the project down every time I put it on so I just don't immediately just start and go into the next one. I slide it down so that I can get it around the thickness of the shaft so that each of the stitches are consistent. Don't forget to do that. So regardless of what size it is, make sure you slide it to get that right thickness. And I believe that this is the last one but I'm gonna just double count and make sure that I have 10 on my hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So I have 10 here so I'm actually done. So I've chained my 10 and now I've collected. Now just like I told you in the intro is that we never ever turn our work. So what we're going to do no matter what we do on this particular series at all and in most Tunisian projects is that you're always just going to come back doing the exact same thing each and every time. If you're doing other color combinations or whatever then that's when it changes but this is what we're gonna do each and every time. To come back what you need to do is that before you start the process is that we need to yarn over and pull through the beginning loop first only once. So just yarn over and pull through the first loop. That acts as a chain so that it can move up the row. Okay so it's just like it would be if, if you turned it and it's regular crochet hook and we chain one to do a single crochet all the way across. It's the same process but we're doing it on this side instead. Now this is the fun part. You're going to yarn over and pull through two, two loops now and you're going to continue to do that all the way back. So you're yarning over and pulling through two. Now before I go any further you're going to notice that there's a vertical string that is very obvious and in your face. This is where we're going to be playing within this vertical string when it comes to the simple stitch. When we and when we do the purl stitch we're also going to be playing on this vertical and then when we do the knit stitch that's when it gets a little complicated and I'll show you more about that. So we're just going to continue to yarn over and pull through two all the way back. So we've simply just cast it on and we're ready to go with any kind of stitch that you want to do. Okay, so coming all the way back. Okay, so this is um, the casting on process. We've just come all the way back. Now it appears that we have a picket fence going on and this is the interesting thing about Tunisian and we'll cover this when we cast off but I'll tell you now. When you go to finish this project you don't actually finish on this side of your hook. You actually finish off on this side because what happens is, is that this is only half of the stitches done on this particular row. It's not until you go back in this direction that you actually do finish off that row completely and I'll show you that in just a moment. So let's begin to do the simple stitch. That's next. So what we're going to do is that for the simple stitch we want to play within the vertical uh, strings that you see. Do you see those there? They're all pretty obvious when it's big yarn. The smaller yarn it's obvious too but it's easier to see it and point it out and put my fingers through it so you can really see it. So what we want to do is that we just simply we don't chain one at all. Okay this is for the simple stitch we don't chain one. We just immediately start. So you're looking for the second vertical in. So this is the first one looking for the second one in and to do that we just insert our hook in behind the vertical strand only. It's just the one strand. 
yarn over and pull through that vertical strand and slide it and collect again. So do you see how you cannot see through that picket fence anymore versus this side? This is what makes it finish by finishing it on the other side. So what we're going to do is that we're going to come into the next vertical. So you got the first one, come into the next vertical for a simple and pull through. Okay, the next vertical, yarn over and pull through. The next one. So if I started off with 10 chains like we talked about and then I still had 10 after I went across the first time, how many loops do you think should be on the hook? And if you're guessing 10, the answer is right. Okay, so I'm not even counting at this point. I'm just, I'm pretty confident in my own skills but sometimes when I first start I like to be able to, to double check. So I should be on 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So here's the thing. On the outside, okay, you don't, you see a vertical loop but that's wrong. So what you have to actually look for is look for where there's two strands. Okay, and go right into that instead. So you don't look for one loop, you look for the, the actual chain um, stitch just like so. Yarn over and pull through. Okay, if you go through one loop or one strand on the end you will have a massive hole that appears in your project each and every time. So you can see that the picket fence is now gone. You can no longer see through this project so that you can see that when you go back and all of the loops are in the hook this is actually when the row below is actually complete. To go back in the other direction it's just like we started before. So we yarn over and pull through one loop only and now for the remaining of this particular line we yarn over and pull through two each and every time. Okay, so that's pretty easy right? So really the, the row that's going backward like resetting a typewriter or Fred Flintstone eating his corn on the cob is so simple in almost all of the Tunisian projects that are available because this is the same process to return ourselves all the way back to the beginning. So I'm going to review the simple stitch one more time before we move on. So you can see here is that you have what it called like a pick of vents. You can see that the row below is now filled in. That's because we've already come across. So let's just do one more row of this and then I'm going to move you on to another stitch. So to begin the simple remember that we just don't worry about this first vertical. We go to the second one over. Okay, so you just gotta look for it. You remember how I talked about there's a lean? You can see that the lean is actually happening. You see that the stitches are actually leaning over. So that's not a big deal. You just have to straighten up your work and all of these will pick right back up to being vertical. So let's uh, begin again. We come into the second um, vertical, yarn over and pull through. And we're gonna just speed up and we do that all the way across. So once you get the hang of this you can actually um, really being able to motor along. So in the next part of this when I come all the way back um, I'm just gonna tell you, talk to you before we move on. We're gonna be covering um, the actual um, knit stitch next. N the knit stitch, uh, stitch actually looks like it's truly knitted and uh, it's actually really amazing. It's my most favorite stitch of the whole Tunisian um, at this time and I think it's amazing. Remember on the edges we don't just go into one, we go into the actual chain and there should be two strands left on top of your line and pull through. Okay and then we return again once again so you can kind of see everything is filled in. To return we simply yarn over and pull through the first loop only and then for the remainder we yarn over and pull through two. Okay and you can see that the curl is slightly happening and if my hook was much smaller it would be a lot more severe and again that's when blocking and etc. comes into play when you put, put borders around this. When we go to put borders around uh, Tunisian just so that you're aware you can't use the same size crochet hook. You have to go back down to the recommendation of the actual um, strand itself because the in actual fact because the tension is so tight um, it's actually making this to that size even though you're using a larger size hook in order to achieve it. 
So let's uh, begin just like that. So this is the, the simple stitch and again you can see that the next verticals are ready for you and we're gonna do the knit stitch next. So let's cover the knit stitch and the knit stitch literally looks like knitting and we're gonna be covering how to do this uh, in a future tutorial. This is called Fair Isle. And what we're going to do then for the knit stitch is that we're going to make the look of knitting. So what's happening here is that knit the knit stitch actually has a lot more tension to it. You're going to notice on this particular project that the project is gonna to wanna to buckle in and that's because these stitches are tighter, okay, versus a, a regular Tunisian simple stitch. Okay, so the actual row is kind of condensed in on itself. So you can see the difference of the two. Just like so. So this is one stitch and these are just one. So it actually looks more narrow. So you can actually just decide, okay, I'm gonna do a knit stitch for this particular project and expect it to stay the same size. It will be smaller this way as well as uh, in, the, in the width just like this. So what we need to do in order to get that look is that we have to insert a hook into a different spot within the project. So we're still looking for the vertical lines and we had been going in to the next one and just straight across and that's the simple stitch. What we want to do this time is that we wanna do a knit stitch and the reason why I use the bigger hook for this particular episode is that you need to actually go in on a diagonal. So see this uh, vertical loop? Well the other side is coming down on the other side. Okay, so it's coming up and over and they're all like that. So what we need to do is that we need to go in behind that first one but we need to continue to go backward on a diagonal and go so that the hook is on the other side of the of the project. Okay, so what's happening is that this string is on this side but the other string with associated to it is sitting on the, the hook on the other side and we grab the yarn and we pull through. The knit stitch is not evident on the first row. It's, uh, it's evident from the second row going forward. So we got our first one in. The next one we go through the vertical. Okay, the, okay, instead of going through the front we just continue to go and push it back so that it's right in between those strings. There is a diagram in the pattern um, that we will be doing uh, this on. It's kind of hard to see because there's so many strings but again you just continue to go back in on a diagonal. And what this is doing is it's turning the stitches sideways to give it that knitting appearance. So we just go in and go diagonally back. Okay, so if I can really point it out there so you see you go in diagonally to the back. And you continue to do that all the way across. We're gonna be doing two projects that feature this uh, particular stitch and, and on the end it's just like we did with the regular. Um, we go into the, so that there's two strands so we'll go into a chain stitch. Okay, once we're at the end just like we did before we, we yarn over pull through one loop to start and then yarn over and pull through two. And we do that all the way back. So then it appears to be the same look as what we have but the row below is gonna have it uh, starting to do um, a turn to it to give you the knit look. And that will be evident when we go back the second time over. Okay, so that's what it looks like at this point. You can see it looks slightly different than what this row was here and then we're ready to start again. Once you do it the first time it's easier then to see the stitches the second time as you go through. To begin the next row we're still gonna do the knit stitch. So again we just immediately start on the second uh, post or second strand and we go in and diagonally to the back and pull through. And now you're really gonna start seeing it and you do that for each one. So just go diagonally. You can see that the strands are just now there. Okay, it's, that's where you're going. So you're going through here and go through diagonally. This is my most favorite stitch of them all. Um, I can't really knit very well and um, I love my crochet hook but this allows me to have the look of knitting without actually learning to knit. Okay and we're just continue to go all the way across. The last one again 
you're making sure that you're going into the chain stitch. So there should be two strings there. Let's go backwards. So just yarn over, pull through one only. And you can see that the work has now changed to appear to be knitting. Okay, so you can really see it there now. Okay, so we've gone from the simple stitch just like you see to what appears to be knitted. So I'm gonna go one more time. I love this stitch a lot and it really doesn't take a lot of time. So just going in on a diagonal to the back of the project or the back of the fabric. They say once this is all like uh, um, Tunisianed up they refer to it as fabric because you're basically that's what you're creating. Okay, and then once you're over there, again yarn over one and then going two all the way back. So that is the Tunisian knit stitch, my favorite one of them all. So just like that. So what we're going to do next is, see? So you got the, the simple stitch here and then the Tunisian just like this. So what we're gonna do next is that we're gonna work on the Tunisian pearl stitch. So if I bring back my other project that I had for my hat, what this is is a combination of the knit stitch, okay, and pearl stitch. So the knit stitch is appearing to pop out and the pearl stitch is sinking backward in. Now the pearl stitch is a little bit of work and um, I'm not gonna deny to anybody that um, it's hard to get used to but once you get used to it, it's okay. So it's one of those ones that it seems awkward at first but if you stick with it, you're gonna be fine. So let's begin to do the pearl stitch. So let's begin to do the Tunisian pearl stitch. Now the pearl is actually a little bit awkward to start with. So I'm just gonna show you this. So when we did the simple stitch, we came in front and we grabbed the yarn and we just did this, okay? So we just came in the front. But do you see where this yarn is? It's coming out toward the back and we just kinda loop around. No big deal, just like this. Okay, and so you can see that it's returning back to the simple stitch even though we were just doing the Tunisian knitting a few moments ago. So what you need to, to pay attention to is that the pearl stitch is slightly different. So what we're going to do is just back out, see how easy it is. So if you're screwing up in knitting, um, it's really hard to fix your errors. You do it in Tunisian, really easy. So what we wanna do before we start doing the pearl is that we have to move the strand in front, okay? So the strand is in front and we have to access this vertical uh, strand. So we still are playing within these strands but the yarn has to be moved forward before we go into that stitch. So I have my own technique but it's in front now. And then you insert your hook in. So you can see that the yarn strand is coming out between the hook, okay, and down. And then we grab the yarn and pull through. And you can kinda see that it's kinda looped around this particular strand. So now that the string is now in front, it's just easier to do the remaining of the pearls. So what I just do is that I move the hook down and did you see how I just did that? I just didn't jump over that, that strand. Okay, so I just didn't go like this because if I do that, it's gonna move it back to being a, a regular simple stitch which is fine if you're looking for that in your particular pattern. But to maintain the purl stitch, this string needs to remain down in front. So you can either just pull forward like this and insert your hook, okay? So the strand is coming up underneath, you wrap it around your hook and pull through. You can do that but it's very time consuming. So what I do is that when I go to insert into the post or into the strand here, so what I just do is that I move the hook and then I just make sure this yarn is in front. Okay, so that means that it will now be still coming underneath and then I wrap. And what I just do is 
subconsciously or unconsciously I'm not sure I use my finger and I pinch because if it's too tight in the back here it's gonna be hard to pull through. So I just kinda pinch so it doesn't pull any more extra um, yarn and it's just easier. Okay so you can either move it forward first insert into the strand then wrap the hook or you can be lazy like me and just move it so that the hook is behind that strand then go in see and it's still there and pull through. Okay so just moving it in front so I'm not looping it or anything I'm just making sure my hook is in the right position and I'm just doing this. Okay and what this is doing is creating a purl. Now it's still creating your vertical strings to play with so it doesn't change any of that, that fact at all and uh, it makes it really kind of easy to follow. So either you can either move it forward manually and then wrap or just do it with the slight motion of your hook. The end is still always the same like we've done before again into the chain stitch. So there should be two strings pulling through. So to go backward it's still the same thing. It's just chain one okay through the first loop and then just pulling it through two. Okay and this changes the look of your particular stitch. So what we're doing is that in the future tutorials coming up is that we're gonna be mixing and matching um, our stitches that we're just learning today to be able to do a final project. So let's review this again. So we're gonna start off and you have to move that yarn forward. So what I just do is just I move my hook so it's, it brings that yarn underneath on its own and then I wrap and pull through. It's not lazy, it's sensible because nobody has time to waste on steps that you don't really need to do. So you see how I'm just kind of pinching that? It just makes it a lot easier. So I just pinch and hold because if you don't pinch it I find it just adds too much extra tension to be able to fight with and so it just get your thumb just ready to pinch. So this is the Tunisian Pearl Stitch. So what we're going to do is that I'm gonna show you how to cast off because we've talked about uh, you know the picket fence in the very beginning of this particular stitch uh, part of this tutorial and basically it leaves a hole in your work if you go to finish it on the other side. So let's uh, just get in our, our final here that's a chain stitch and let's come all the way back. Okay, so let's just verify there's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If there wasn't 10 I'd be in trouble right now but there's still 10 it's okay. We're gonna just yarn over and pull through the first one and then yarn over and pull through two. So you're going to see that it's like a picket fence. You're gonna be able to see through this particular row. So we're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to cast off in just a moment. Okay, so you can't just finish right now because you'll end up on the, on the edge that has these massive holes in it unless that's what the look you're going for but then it's not consistent with the other side that is completely filled in. So let me show you how to cast off next. To cast off we're just going to uh, do this and we do this in entrelock all the time so you just gotta make sure you're paying attention. So we go in like it's a simple stitch so just behind the vertical and we pull through and through. And what we're just doing is that we're doing a uh, like a cast off. So we're just going behind the vertical the next one pull through and through the next vertical and we're making our way all the way to the very start or the other side of the, the particular chain that we started with like this. And it makes for the most perfect edging as well because you can add stuff uh, like borders and stuff to your particular project if you do it like this. So that's how you fasten off. It's really kind of easy to do. You just go all the way to the end including that, that final um, chain, uh, chain uh, just like this. So we go into the final chain pulling it through and through and now you're physically ready to, to fasten off and you have it all filled in just like this and this is, would be how you do it. So in the future episodes that we have coming up you're gonna be uh, playing with these stitches for real projects that are useful for around your home. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochet crowd.com. Stay tuned as we now start to explore projects together. <music>